good. We're good to go? <laughs> yep. So, Adam, I guess give me a sense for folks who know your movies, know your career, know you as the ace man on the radio and on the TV. When did it come to the tech side of things? Podcasts, blogs, all this stuff. This isn't exactly your wheelhouse. No. I, I'm not sure that I have a wheelhouse. It's on a ship, right? <laughs> Boy, it's like our kids are never going to know what we're talking about. We start talking about wheelhouses. Uh, no, I don't really have a wheelhouse. I have an outhouse. Maybe a chamber pot. So I think of this as, this as being in my outhouse. Um, well, you know, I wasn't a tech-savvy guy. I'm still not really a tech-savvy guy. Um, but I was doing radio. I stopped doing radio. And uh, my tech-savvy buddy said... You should keep talking, and uh, and he and it was awesome because it's like blogging or I should say podcasting because I haven't even got to that part yet. Uh, podcasting is like radio except for instead of them paying you, you pay for bandwidth. It's awesome. Uh, wow, sounds like a great deal. So we started doing the podcast, and uh, the people started listening, and we started paying a ton in bandwidth. And uh, next thing you know, instead of being paid to do radio, I was paying to podcast. And you've got the sponsorships involved now, trying to get that going, because getting the dollar is yeah. unfortunately what it's all about. Well, look, it's, it's no different than, you know, whether you're on the web or you're on the beach and there's a guy with a Cessna dragging a big banner that says Ducati behind the plane, or you're... Uh, you know, a NASCAR driver and it's on the hood of your car or on the sleeve of your fire suit. It's just about products, names, businesses, and getting it out there, and you just become another modality to get that out there. I know that wasn't funny. But, uh, I mean, really, the podcast is no different than radio. It's get some ears on your product, try to create a good product, even get a few more ears on it, or one giant ear. I keep saying, why do we why do we need all these little ears when we just get one massive ear the size of like Mount Cheyenne? Yeah. Imagine a Q-tip for that baby. Either way, you get a bunch of ears, and then you just start uh, talking about, uh, hey, this is the beer I drink, and then they give you a few dollars, and you know, you cut out the middleman. A lot of folks here all have strategies. They all got a plan. They all got a business model of how you can be successful, how you can be number one, and yet you showed up on the scene, you were Adam, and all of a sudden you're number one on iTunes. Well, I'm going for uh, shock and awe. That, that would be my, my strategy, my battle plan. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we had a built-in audience from the radio, so it's sort of unfair to uh, assume that people are listening because of good. It was more just out of habit, you know. When, when we were on uh, the radio for the last few weeks, I said, uh, hey, you know, if you want to keep getting your fix, I'll go do a podcast, and a certain percentage of people just came along with us on that journey, and they've spread the word a little bit, and, uh, and, and we've been successful, uh, but, you know, we had a head start, so it's sort of a, a disadvantage for those people who just want to start at grassroots, and, you know, if you kids at home are reading into this message that I'm telling you, forget about your dreams of starting a podcast, you'd be right. Stand no chance. Uh, you know, I'm a nationally syndicated radio show host who was on Dancing with the Stars, I'm practically a household name. And uh, if you're thinking about starting your own little crappy podcast from your basement, good luck. <laughs> I don't need the competition, but you're not a competition. <laughs> look at you, you're a beautiful man. Oh, right? look at me, yeah. You know, when you think about all the ways that people are trying to sell things and trying to trying to make money off of this, is there ever a thought that the content, what you're actually giving out to people, is taking a back seat? Because you're always a content man. You want to have the funny. You want to have something interesting to say. But a lot of these folks are selling a lot, but they're not selling anything good. Well, uh, you know, the consumer will decide when the content outweighs the commercials or the commercials outweigh the content. Uh, I don't know what your favorite TV show is, but let's just say it's lost. 
And uh, I don't mean the show Lost. I just mean you've actually lost your favorite TV show. And you can't find it. Now, let's say your favorite TV show is Lost. Right now, it's an hour-long show, and there's three or four commercial breaks, and those last for four or five minutes. At some point, if they ratchet that up to six minutes, you might stay with it. But eventually, when it got into 15 minutes of commercial breaks, you'd stop watching Lost. So it's this weird kind of balance, which is if they ran Lost commercial-free, then they would just lose money on the show Lost uh, because they're paying a bunch of actors to sit around in Maui and act and not getting anything back from Tide or Nabisco. If they ran 20-minute commercials, they'd lose you. And it's this... You know, and that's kind of what this is, and that's kind of what everything is. You know, it's just that weird little balance between you get to have your favorite show, I get to keep the lights on in my studio, and we'll, we'll, we'll strike this balance. How much of the success of the podcast is a validation of what you were doing before? That the, the sudden loss of the radio show, now you get a chance to say, yeah, you know what, I am popular. People do like me. They want to be a part of what I'm doing. How much of that is a validation of what you're trying to get? Well, <laughs> you know, I never, I never really had the, you know, I, I, I didn't, I didn't have the usual sort of bitter departure that most people have when they get uh, fired from their jobs. You know, I didn't have the, uh, I'm going to load up the shotgun and go back in and, uh, and show everybody <laughs> what. Who's, who's really the boss around here? Although you know, it's still a possibility, quite honestly. Um, I didn't have that. I, I was like, look, I, they're running a business, and they've decided the best way to run their business is to scan me. And I don't, I can't say that I agree with it, but I don't. Nothing personal, you know. I mean, it's sort of. It's like when you get a parking ticket. You can get mad at the meter maid, but it's not like he hates you. He hates your windshield. You know what I mean? I mean, he's trying to make money for the city. You're just another victim in, in his eyes, you know? And you can get all personal and weird with stuff and, you know, take a, you know, a really get an ulcer about it. Or you can realize... It's nothing personal, just your bumper was hanging into the red. He's trying to make another 32 bucks for the city. And, you know, as far as CBS radio went, I never took it as anything more than this is a business decision. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter whether they're right or wrong, and I don't know if they're right or wrong. They're making a business decision, and it's nothing personal. Uh, it feels good to finally answer your question. <laughs> to say, uh, hey fans, and uh, there's a lot of you out there, here's a place you can come find me, and we don't have to, you know, we can still be pen pals even after, uh, even if we're not, you know, uh, even if I'm not studying abroad and, and uh, going to the same summer school as you anymore, we can still stay in touch when I move back to the States, and it's a nice validation, and it means, uh, I mean, again, when we started the podcast, I said, well, how much is this thing going to cost? And my uh, tech guy said, two, three hundred dollars a month, maybe something like that in terms of, I said, well, what's the two, three hundred dollars a month? He said, well, it's bandwidth. So however much bandwidth you use up, however much you have to pay for. And he estimated it at a couple hundred dollars a month. And, you know, the month after that, it was eight thousand dollars a month. So, you know, uh, being loved all the way to the poorhouse, really. <laughs> Stop it, fans. I got kids. Understand? Stop it. Um, so it, it was a nice validation, yeah. Alex, you got any other 